r slash ask reddit. What's one sign that implies you have a bad friend? They tell others what you ask them to keep private. That's why you make up fake secrets to each friend to see who the mole is. 500 IQ plays by, you poopola. How the fuck does he have 4 million karma? Fake secrets. I had a friend, who always found me when he needed something, then forget about me for a couple of months years. I was there for him, when his family didn't talk with him because of his girlfriend, but he refused to talk to me, when my mom died. Eventually I cut all contact with him. Well that friend of yours is such a piece of shit. Hope you're doing well now. Of course I am. Thank you for asking. I have a very best friend of 17 years who in the same scenario when I said to him that my mom died and I wanna talk to someone responded with, you need me right now? If yes, 2 minutes and I'm there. So yeah, I have a great friend. I completely cut the other guy out of my life. The other thing he liked to do is prioritize people. If someone higher priority was there he forget about my existence, like he doesn't know me, or bullied me, etc. That's great that you found a friend. Hope you two have good things come your way. I mean, we are best friends since first grade, we are in both 23, live in different cities but we still talk daily. I wish everyone a friendship like ours. Damn. That is real friendship right there, I really wish the best of luck of you two. Thank you. Honestly. If you feel unhappy and exhausted after talking or being with them, you probably shouldn't do that anymore. I have this with a friend. But that is only if we meet up at one of our houses. At school it's fine, at the mall it's fine. But she is annoying as fuck at my home. What do you want to do? I don't know. Want to do question mark no. Gives 20 other suggestions. No. Shows her a video on my phone starts to do her thing because she can't freaking understand English. From the Netherlands where you learn English from almost the beginning. Rest of the afternoon consists of doing things for 5 minutes, and stopping and me watching TV while she is on her phone or talking about her experiences, while I feel like I can't, because she doesn't seem interested. She is a nice girl and this is the only environment she pulls this shit in. I think she's trying to hint that she wants the D, not the TV. I am female. Yes. One-sided conversations. Always their drama and whining. And half the drama is made up bullshit and even if you call them out on it they deny it. Or drama that they cause themselves, but you don't have the nerve to say that to their faces, so you just have to nod and say, yeah while they rant for ages. Or the times they just take your car and go for parties, and you have to wait till the morning till they bring the car back with new bumps and dents, and then they raid your fridge for food and leave without saying a word. I swear friends these days. Shaking my head. People do that? Jesus, whoever did that, cut ties with that entitled mofo asap. When they use you as a hanging out person until someone I like more comes. I always ask my roommate if he wants to hang out and he always says, yeah, if I'm not doing anything cool man, keep me as your plan B in case something better comes along. Sheesh. Shit, I use this line frequently. I think my friends know I'm referring to work or when my parents unexpectedly need my help, but this post made me realize I need to clarify that a lot better. It's definitely context sensitive. Yeah, if I have literally nothing else better to do I guess we can do stuff, versus, yeah, if I'm not busy then I'd love to hang out. I'd kill to hang out with people, but when the job, house and family take up 90% of my waking life it makes it really hard to make plans for anything fun. Their time is more valuable than yours. Like I have this friend that would show up to my D&D games 4 hours after everyone else because of a really stupid reason. And he later showed up at the end of my other friend's wedding because, he wanted to get some tea before coming. He was basically the best man. Even though we don't have that in our culture. I was gonna play a game with a friend 5 time zones away. I had to shape my whole day around that because I was in my second to last semester in college and I had basically no time for anything that wasn't work or chores, or, errands. An hour and a half or so after we were supposed to start, she told me she'd had a friend over and the friend just left. 
I'd been getting impatient but she assured me she'd be ready in just a minute. I figured I could afford to take a bit more time. Then she tells me she and her friend ate all her favorite chips and she has to get more right now. It'll only take her 20 minutes tops. I wait. An hour later I tell her I have to go or I'll never be able to get everything done. Later while I'm out running errands she tells me she's back, she's ready to play our game. Gets mad when I tell her I'm not there. I wasted my entire day for someone who thought her chips took priority over everything else. She'd known about my situation, too. This. I really hate this. When they always keep you waiting or routinely cancel plans at the last moment. This one sounds familiar. I had, or have, a friend that did this more often than not. The last time was a month ago. Cancelled a trip I was looking forward for over a week. Her words are that she promised to spend the day with another friend. Law. I stopped contacting her because I still feel like shit after reading this. I don't know why but I feel like I know the exact amount of how shitty she is just from reading this. When you can't be yourself near them. Super important to find friends who support and like you for who you are in my opinion. A. Yes and no. What if you have some genuine flaws that need to be addressed? It's hard to grow as a person if you surround yourself with people who won't call you out on your bullshit. That's like you can be yourself around them and they call you on your shit. But what if you're an asshole in general? Always hard to find the balance. You haven't noticed that most assholes still have friends? Although yes, it is important to improve who you are that absolutely does not mean it's unrealistic to expect people you call friends to like you for who you are even though you might have flaws. If you have to pretend you don't have them then those aren't friends. And that's okay too. Maybe your flaws make you incompatible with those people. That's fine. But if people insist they're your friends but force you to fake who you are around them, that isn't a friend. That doesn't preclude personal growth. It just means that the people who want to be your friends can't try to force it on you. I'll take this one step further. A sign that you think you have a friend, but actually don't. The person literally never reaches out to you. This. This happened with some friends after my dad died after a long illness and they couldn't even bother to reach out and send an I'm sorry for your loss email or text. A lot of people keep defending their behavior. Maybe they just didn't know what to say now. That's a BS excuse and I'm better not having such unsupportive people in my life. The people who showed up for me during that time? Friends. And I'd do the same for them in a heartbeat. No one knows what to say when that happens. But you say something or offer to buy your friend a drink or just hang with them. At the very least there is a reason why the platitude I'm so sorry for your loss works. It's not the most personable, but it at least acknowledges what happened. They could even say I don't know what to say but radio silence? Nah, people can google what to say when someone's loved one dies and find lots of great examples. They like to tear you down a lot. Even if it's just as jokes. When they are never there to help you feel better when you're down but will be the first to say shit about you. I'm pretty thick skinned. Like, I have a self deprecating sense of humor and tolerate jokes. But if that person can't take a robbing back, fuck that person. Edit, I wrote ribbing a word my spell check apparently robs of existence. Fuck you, spell check. Yeah, OPS point of view definitely doesn't hold up with everyone. A lot of my close friends and I spend 90% of our time calling each other morons, even though in reality we think pretty highly of each other. I definitely don't do it with all my friends but a good ribbon can be a sign of just being pretty close to a person. I think there's two factors for context that change whether or not you're being an asshole. A are they sensitive about the subject that you're poking fun at? I have a friend who used to be very fit but became very depressed and has become overweight. I never poke fun at him being fat and I always encourage him to hit the gym and try to go with him when I can. Likewise, he doesn't make your mama jokes to me because he knows I work hard to take care of her, she's disabled and had to go through chemo for cancer. Jokes that go after your vulnerabilities aren't jokes, it's bullying. And only assholes bully their friends. Edit, really, anybody who bullies anybody is an asshole. But bonus points for doing it to people you supposedly care about, I guess, b, are they already depressed? 
Even if it's normally a joke they'd laugh at, sometimes there are moments where you don't need to add to the dog pile. If you're always considerate of those two things, you're going to be in good standing with anybody that you're friends with. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video.